Hey guys, welcome back to the Kool Aid Podcast. Welcome back to another video. On today's video, we're going to be talking a little bit about Barcelona's 2 1 victory over Valencia last night. We're going to be talking about that. And then, as well, you know, looking at some of the follow and as well, talking about some transfer rumors in regards to Kingsley Coleman, Ilkay Gondogan, and as well, talking about Joao Cancelo. Yes, Joao Cancelo. Barcelona, they're still interested in Joao Cancelo. We're going to be talking about that all on today's video. But guys, before I get started on the video, make sure to follow me on all my social media platforms. Everything is posted down below in the description. Go over there and check me out. That way you guys can stay up to date with everything that I do on the channel. But guys, let's get straight into the video. All right, guys, let's get straight into the video and let's talk about Barcelona's match last night against Valencia. Now, in you know, towards the end of the watch long, I did give my thoughts uh, about the match. I thought the first half from Barcelona against Valencia, it wasn't the best. It was relatively poor. Barcelona they were struggling in that opening uh, half. Valencia created tons of opportunity, they put Barcelona in some very uh, dangerous situations, and we even conceded early. We, we conceded first. And as you can see right here, uh, Rafa Mir, he scores a header, uh, beating Ter Stegen, who absolutely does nothing and, and was heavily criticized in yesterday's match uh, because he could have been at fault for Barcelona going down 2-0. But uh, it was a cross from uh, Barcelona's uh, right-hand side. Uh, Inigo Martinez and Balde are asleep. They aren't marking Rafa Mir. And then Rafa Mir, you know, he makes that run inside, he gets that header. And a cross goal, Ter Stegen, you know, can't do anything about that and uh Ter Stegen is beat Barcelona go down uh one nil and uh, it was an absolute you know horror uh horrible way to start and horror um you know way to start the match and then as well just a couple minutes later you have Ter Stegen uh making this pass out of the back and uh he actually puts Barcelona in trouble because this was a poorly um you know played pass uh one of the Valencia players intercepts it the pass was actually going for Kunde. Uh, the cross goes in. Uh, Rafa Mir beats Ter Stegen. He gets the shot on goal. And it's not, you know, like a crazy shot or anything like that. It's just like a P-roller. And then it's Balco Arce making a goal line clearance, saving Barcelona from going 2-0 down. Now, Balco Arce, thank you so much. Because what could have been a 2-0 later turned into 1-1? One -one? Uh, because it was actually... Barcelona, uh, who went on the other end of the pitch, and they scored the equalizer. It was actually Balde uh, putting in a fantastic cross to Laminia Mal, and it was Laminia Mal, as you can see with the ball. Uh, he, you know, first time uh, passes it to Robert Lewandowski, who is in, in that six-yard box, and he gets an easy tap in, and Barcelona equalized right before the half. And uh, as I said, you know, in the intro of the video, Barcelona, they were a little bit slow. They weren't fantastic in that first half. And uh, a lot of criticism can be given to the team. But, um, you know, then starting in the second half, Barcelona, they actually win a penalty through a fantastic run by Rafinha uh, right here, the Valencia defender. Uh, as you can see, clips uh, his left ankle and Barcelona win the penalty. Robert Lewandowski takes it and uh, he scores uh, Barcelona's second goal and then gives us the 2 1 lead. And then, you know, what could have been a horrible way to start the season is later turned out to be, you know, uh, a sort of a scare. Barcelona, they didn't have, you know, a couple of chances later in the game to make it 31. You have Robert Lewandowski right here, uh, who is, who was on course uh, for the hat trick, but he skies it over the bar. It was a really, really good chance uh, for Robert Lewandowski. And, uh, you know, that marks Robert Lewandowski scoring. Six goals in four matches against Valencia. Uh, his actually his favorite opponent in La Liga, Robert Lewandowski, uh, showing his clinical nature uh, in this game. And then you have later on in the match, you have another chance from Ferran Torres right here, which Laminia Mal created a fantastic chance from him, uh, having a fantastic roulette and then putting an amazing pass to, to Ferran Torres. And Ferran Torres right here, uh, you know, he's running inside, inside the box. He has like a 1v1. And, um, you know, he goes uh, low across the keeper. But uh, Marmar Davili has a fantastic save. And uh, Ferran Torres yesterday did not have a good game, guys. We have to be honest, Ferran Torres did not have a good game. And, you know, a lot of criticism, fair criticism, was headed towards his way because people were just wondering, hey, what's, what's the point of having Ferran at the club if he doesn't do anything? But uh, one of the scariest guys from yesterday's match was actually Alejandro Balde because Alejandro Balde, 
he came off in the second half with some discomfort and uh, Gerald Martin, he came on to replace him. And when I saw this, I was like, absolutely uh, gutted because I was thinking Baude has just come back from a long injury uh, in that game against the Athletic Club, you know, being injured in the Copa Rey and being out for months. Uh, he does the preseason in Barcelona. He plays some good games. And just an hour in a competitive match, Alejandro Baude goes down injured. I was saying, of course, this is just typical Barcelona luck. Uh, but thankfully, uh, it isn't the case. Alejandro Balde, uh, he came out in social media. He thanked the three points, and he says it was only a knock. Everything is good. And that's fantastic news because if Alejandro Balde is fit, you can see what he can offer you. Um, you know, just look at Barcelona's first goal in which, you know, he was able to give that uh, that amazing pass to Lamine Mal, who then gave the assist uh, to Robert Lewandowski, who scored our equalizer. But, um, guys, talking about some of the other, you know, good performers in the match, we have to talk about Marc Asado because, you know, Marc Asado, he did have a chance, uh, you know, to, to score on the match. He, he did miss uh, a clear-cut chance. Uh, but Marc Asado, he played really, really well uh, against Valencia. He was absolutely everywhere. He was dominating. And um, Marc Asado is just, I, I just know it. He's going to be a Hansi Flick favorite. Uh, Marc Asado was just so, so good in the last night. And just looking at some of the stats from Marc Asado, uh, he had 80 touches, 52 out of 62 passes, 5 out of 5 long balls, 11 passes into the final third, 2 chances created, 3 shots, 1 dribble, 1 tackle, 2 clearances, 3 ball recoveries, 6 out of 10 duels won, and 1 foul won. Marc Asado was absolutely brilliant on the night. And uh, when Pedri, he came on in the second half, you saw Marc Asado a little bit more free, you saw him a little bit better. And, um, you know, Marc Asado just absolutely phenomenal. And his partner in crime, Marc Bernal, was absolutely phenomenal as well, uh, who, you know, debut in Barcelona as well in La Liga. He debuted uh, in La Liga. And uh, Marc Bernal, just similar to that of Marc Asado, he was absolutely amazing. He was, you know, a DM covering space, doing so much work. And um, some of the long passes that he was able to, you know, to, to thread and some of the passes that he was able to give was fantastic. And looking at some of his stats against Valencia, uh, he played for 71 minutes, uh, had 61 touches, 49 out of 52 passes, uh, completed a 94% uh, of accurate pass accuracy, four out of four accurate long balls, five out of eight ground duels won, one out of one aerial duels won, one block shot, four tackles, three recoveries, and zero fouls committed. You saw in a couple instances when Valencia, they were countering Barcelona. Marc Bernal was just in the right space. Uh, he, he was able to make up the right tackle, uh, you know, intercept the right pass, and he was just basically putting out fires everywhere in that midfield. And uh, Marc Bernal, he came out on Instagram and he said, after 11 years in my life, in, in, in my life club, my dream has come true. A pride uh, to be able to defend the shield. Many thanks to everyone who made it possible. Visca el Barça. And hopefully, you know, Marc Bernal, he can have, you know, a successful season at, at Barcelona because that midfield position is something that Barcelona have been struggling for a couple of years. And if Marc Bernal is able to basically make that position his own, uh, partner with Marc Casado, then Barcelona, they are in for some good times. And uh, briefly talking about uh, Hansi Flick's thoughts after the match. Uh, he did have some criticism, but he says, um, uh, wait, just let me bring it up right here, guys, so just so you can see, but he said, we have to perform like we did in the second half. I'm satisfied with that. We're focusing on that. Uh, we have a lot to improve. Uh, we fall hard, we're intense, and we deserve the three points. But uh, I do like the Hansi Flick towards the end of the of, of the post-game press conference. Uh, he did say, you know, that, Barcelona, they weren't perfect. We did the job. We played well in the second half. The first half was filled with a lot of mistakes and a lot of errors, but uh, we do have improvement to be made. And uh, I like that because it just shows that Barcelona, they're still hungry and they still need to improve. And uh, he later on talks about Ilkay Gundogan, who you know has a lot of rumors um, surrounding him uh, because it broke out in the media that um, Ilkay Gundogan was potentially leaving Barcelona or open to leave Barcelona. And that just caught me off completely by surprise because reports from Sport and other Spanish media says uh, that Ilkay Gundogan wants to leave the club because he has doubts about his role in the team. With the arrival of Omo, uh, there are a total of six players who can play in that position. That was Sport's uh, report. Uh, Ilkay Gundogan, he didn't train in Barcelona today, but that was Hansi Flick saying that, hey, he has had a he picked up a knock against Monaco, and you know it's just because he's feeling ill that he wasn't able to be in the squad for the Valencia, and he wasn't able to train uh, today with the team. 
And then he also said uh, on Monday he had a cut. I talked to him about how he was doing. I appreciate what kind of player and person he is. I have the feeling that he will end up staying after a conversation that stays between us. I like that he doesn't uh, give you know uh, anything to the media and everything like that. But you no, know, there are other rumors that say you know Barcelona they want to force out Ilka Gundogan, and there are also rumors that are saying that Ilkay Gundogan wants to return to Manchester City. Now, my thoughts on the whole situation is this. Ilkay Gundogan leaving Barcelona is not the end of the world because we just brought in Danny Olmo. Um, Ilkay Gundogan, yes, he was you know arguably one of Barcelona's best players last season, but him leaving, freeing up that salary salary space, maybe getting you know, a small fee for him, it wouldn't be the end of the world. But if Barcelona are actively trying to force out Ilkay Gundogan, who I just said was one of Barcelona's best players last season, and because it could free up salary space, then I have to heavily criticize Barcelona because what is the planning in this club? We've just brought him in last year. We brought him in last year, and you're just trying to get rid of him just now? What's the planning? Because we've seen this time and time again, for example, in Rafinha, in, in Vitor Roque, players that we, we bring in and that we want to sell. Well, like, well, what's the plan in this club? It's just it's something that Barcelona they haven't been able to do. But, um, you know, it's just it's just frustrating. Uh, but now, guys, I'm going to be talking about some transfer rumors before I end off the video. And I'll have to talk about Kingsley Coleman because negotiations are still ongoing uh, between Barcelona, Kingsley Coleman, and Bayern Munich. Barcelona, they're, you know, exploring the option. And he is one of the candidates uh, to, you know, to basically re replace or, or take up uh, that left wing position. We know that the Nico Williams deal is dead. And so Barcelona right now, they're looking for options out into the market. And Fabrizio Romano reported that, you know, Kingsley Coleman is one of those players and he is open to leaving Bayern Munich. They are open to leaving as well. And the player is prioritizing an exit. And uh, Kingsley Coleman on loan, despite the high salary, I do feel that he'd be a very, very good option for Barcelona. And looking at how he's already has experience on the Hansi Flick, I think that could be a very good, very good thing. We saw, you know, in yesterday's match, we lacked some of that, you know, threat from that left hand side, some pace, some direct mobile ones. That's something that we do need to see at Barcelona. And so, guys, would you guys want to see Kingsley Coleman at Barcelona? And the last piece of news I want to talk about, guys, in regards to Joao Cancelo, because discussions are continuing over the possibility of bringing Joao Cancelo back to Barcelona. Uh, now, we know that Joao Cancelo, he does, and uh, you know he is open to returning to Barcelona, but you know the negotiations, it just depends on Manchester City and Barcelona, whether they're going to be able to agree on the loan, permanent transfer, we're going to have to see. But uh, my thoughts on Joao Cancelo, guys, is simple. I've said this time and time again. Barcelona, why are you going after Joao Cancelo when you have Gerard Martin, when you have Alex Vaggi, you have with Hector Ford, you have just Kunde, you have Alejandro Balde. You have five players who can play in those fullback positions. And, you know, if you really want to, you can force Miguel Faye in there. And there's absolutely no reason why you want to bring in another fullback knowing that you could potentially, you know, trust on La Masia, trust on the players that you already have and just complicate that wage bill even more. And, you know, I just, it doesn't make sense to be going after Joao Cancelo knowing how much of a defensive liability he is. Uh, but guys, that was it for the Barcelona news of the day and as well my, my reaction to yesterday's match. Apologies for not making a match reaction. I was a little bit busy. And, uh, you know, I will be bringing you some more Barcelona content as well. And uh, let me know your thoughts on Barcelona's first game of La Liga, Hansi Flick's first official win in competitive matches, we start off the Hansi Flick era with a win. That's fantastic news because it would have, you know, given Hansi Flick a lot of pressure. Uh, but guys, thank you guys for watching. Thank you guys for tuning in. Make sure to like, subscribe, and comment. And I'll see you guys all in the next video. Peace out, guys. <laughs>